This week in IT, overall of half cyber attacks are now ransomware, but a new idea called malware vaccines could make it harder for hackers. Plus, Microsoft is also thinking about bringing Copilot to on-premises exchange servers, and Windows 11 start menu is about to get a major overhaul. So stay tuned for all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Azure, Microsoft 365, and Windows. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at Chaosoft. A few days ago, Microsoft released its yearly digital defense report, and one of the most surprising things, or maybe not so surprising things, one of the things that really stood out to me was that more than 50% of all cyber attacks are now ransomware, and 4%, just 4% of all attacks, are aimed at stealing, you know, uh, corporate secrets or some kind of espionage. So most attacks are now financially motivated. And one of the things that Microsoft highlights is that legacy protections are now no longer working because hackers are utilizing artificial intelligence more and more to make their hacks more effective. Microsoft also broke down a little bit about the kinds of industries and sectors that are more likely to be affected. So they've said that hospitals municipalities and emergency services are prime targets, of course, because of the critical services that they provide and they'll really want to get back online quickly. So I guess the idea is that they're more likely to cough up whatever is being demanded by the ransomware group. It's also because they tend to have limited budgets and outdated technology. They don't have the funds to be able to update the latest systems, so they also make an easier target. Microsoft also gave a breakdown of of the different countries where these attacks tend to come from and the varying different targets that each country tends to focus on. So they started with China and they're most interested in industrial espionage, targeting NGOs via stealth networks. Then they moved on to Iran and they say that they are targeting logistics and shipping firms across the Middle East and North America. Then Russia focusing on small businesses and pro-Ukraine countries. So just because you're a small business doesn't mean that you're not going to be affected by this. And North Korea using regime-affiliated IT workers to earn money abroad and then send it back, sometimes resorting to extortion. So it's interesting to see how each of those actors is making slightly different plans for who they're going to target. So what does AI have to do with all of this? Well, there have been reports, you know, over the last few months that AI phishing attacks are becoming more and more effective because they're able to essentially create something that sounds more like it could actually be genuine. We're all used to those phishing emails that are very poorly worded, use bad English, and it's a clear giveaway. But these attackers are now using more sophisticated techniques. Sometimes they're generating what appears to be an entire email thread through from various important people in your company, from maybe the CEO to suppliers, and it all looks like it might be something genuine. So you need to watch out for that. Of course, they're able to now automate malware development using AI, so they're able to just pick up the speed to which they're able to iterate new versions of their ransomware to evade detection or to produce completely new ransomware. And using the smarts of AI, they're able able to evade traditional detection systems more effectively. So what is the solution to all of this? Well, Microsoft is saying that you should use AI-enhanced security and head for a zero-trust model. No surprises there. There are two things that Microsoft, especially Zero Trust, has been pushing for many years now. And of course, Microsoft sells AI-enhanced security tools. Cybersecurity should be integrated into your business strategy, not just an afterthought. Of course, this has been a problem for many, many years, and it's just something that's added on to, at the end of a project. You need to make sure it's integrated to everything right from the get-go. Also, to invest in your employees and the culture to make sure that it's a security first culture and train employees to spot the latest attacks, make sure they're aware of these new developments in the way that hackers are using AI to get access to corporate networks. And of course, to make sure that you're using AI defensively, so fighting AI with AI essentially.
digitally. A researcher from a firm called Recorded Futures, a cybersecurity company, has this week proposed that we might look at the idea of malware vaccines. Now, this is not an entirely new idea, to be fair. It has been discussed in the security community before. So the idea is that usually when malware gets onto a machine, it has a look to see if there are any markers to see whether that machine has already been infected. If it has, it just says, OK, well, nothing to do here and moves on. So what they're suggesting is that you infect the machine with those markers and then when that ma malware comes along, it just says, OK, well, it's already infected, so I don't need to do anything here. So you're pre-infecting the machine with certain little markers. It could be a registry key, it could be a particular file. These little signals that give away you know, the fact that the machine is infected by a particular piece of malware. Now, the researchers are suggesting that this could be uh, an open source uh, effort that these vaccines would have to be open source and maintained by the community because they would have to change so quickly. I'm not really sure about this idea whether it make, makes much sense to be honest because I just think that the speed at which malware programmers and hackers are going to be able to overcome this is just so quick that as soon as you put a vaccine out there it seems to me they will have already come up with a solution to uh, to bypass it. And if malware is currently looking for markers that indicate a machine is infected, maybe they just change the malware so that it doesn't look for those markers anymore and it reinfects. So I don't know. I'm not an expert in this field, but it seems to me that I'm not sure that while it sounds like we could apply this theory that we use for our own health to computer health, I'm not sure that it makes much sense. But anyway, if they're able to develop this idea and make it harder for hackers, I'm all for it. But we'll have to wait and see whether this gains any ground at all. Before I go on to the next story, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 58% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on 13,630 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to... 13,700. So if you would like to see these weekly news roundups from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Something else surprising this week, which I didn't expect to hear, apparently Microsoft is surveying its customers as to whether they might be interested in having Copilot attached to on-premises exchange servers. Now, as it stands, Copilot only works with Microsoft's cloud, cloud services like Microsoft 365, Azure and various other things. It doesn't touch on-premises servers at all, but Microsoft is surveying customers to decide, well, maybe we should think about Exchange and now maybe that Exchange has moved to a subscription model. Maybe that's something they consider implementing. Now, that's going to, of course, mean that it gives another reason for customers to stay hooked to their on-premises exchange servers. But I think we all have to accept by this point, there are always going to be organizations that require their own on-premises servers in their own data centers. And the cloud is just going to be a non-starter for them. So Microsoft is thinking about adding features like email summarization, being able to monitor the exchange server's health using artificial intelligence, things that could improve the uptime and the usability of those systems for organizations and end users. So if Microsoft decides to go ahead with this, and it's not something that they've definitely said they're going to do, they're just surveying and seeing what the reaction is at this stage, I reckon that we might also see something like this happen with SharePoint as well, on-premises SharePoint. So we'll have to see where this goes in the future. We've talked a bit about this on the channel before, that Microsoft is planning to improve the start menu, make it more of a grid icon, make it look more like iOS, more like a mobile phone operating system. That's what people are used to, so that's what they want to do here. And this is coming next month, so in November. It might not come to everybody straight away because they tend to do these staggered rollouts, even if you download the latest cumulative update on November's Patch Tuesday. And there are whole host of other small tweaks that we've covered over the last few months on this channel. So I'll just brief briefly go through them now. But there are some things coming with updated taskbar animations, a new battery icon, and changes to File Explorer and improvements to Phone Link. And all this is expected 
next month, so in November. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get it seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave you with another video that you might find interesting, all the enhancements to Windows 11 Copilot that came last week. And that's it for this week. I'd like to thank our friends at Chaosoft again for sponsoring this episode of This Week in IT, and I'll see you next time.